In addition to the acceleration and speed of a high-performance Mustang, this Mach-E includes Ford's latest Blue Cruise technology. This technology works similar to Tesla's autopilot or full self-driving, in which it'll keep you centered in the road and handle highway driving for you, but unlike those systems, you can take your hands off the wheel as long as you remain paying attention. Right now, it is rolling out across the entire Ford lineup, and our car is equipped with it. We were recently on the 101, just north of Sausalito, where the road is digitally mapped for Blue Cruise. Let's take a look at what that looks like behind the wheel of the Mustang. When driving a vehicle equipped with Ford's Blue Cruise hands-off level 2 ADAS, basically you have to be in a Blue Cruise supported zone, a blue zone, and then you simply enable the adaptive cruise control like you would normally. Once you do that, then as you can see the screen switches blue and you can take your hands off the steering wheel, in theory. So the speed limit through this section is 55 miles an hour. Um, I have the speedometer, I have the screw set at 60. So yeah, I'm going slightly over, but unlike the traditional lane keep assist that Ford uses, which is pretty good, this is taking it just a step further. Um, there are sensors here that you can sort of see on the camera just because the flicker shows the infrared camera. It's looking at my eyes, it's making sure that I'm paying attention, and then it's adjusting my speed accordingly as I approach traffic in front of me and as traffic clears. As you can see, when the mode is enabled, the entire screen is blue, including the little graphic down in the lower right-hand corner showing you sort of, hey, look, you're in a blue zone, blue cruise is enabled. There really isn't anything on the infotainment display, otherwise I'd show it to you. Um, and this is an early build, so it doesn't necessarily show on the infotainment where the blue zones are. A Ford rep has said that that could be coming in a future update, but as of right now, these are still pre-production builds and blah, blah, blah. You know all the secrets. So uh, we're in a decent amount of traffic for, for San Francisco. Um, it's definitely not super congested, but... The computer hasn't squawked at me to put my hands back on the steering wheel. I am paying attention even though you can't clearly see that from the angle that I have this camera on, but it seems to be working pretty well. It actually doesn't feel like it's working much different than Ford's traditional lane keep assist that requires your hand on the steering wheel. It seems to be functioning in a very similar way, making those same correct adjustments, all of that, just I don't have to go through the extra step of having my hand on the steering wheel. Do I have to pay attention? Yes. Should you always be paying attention? Yes. Because regardless of what computer system you have in your vehicle, whether it's Ford's Blue Cruise technology, whether it's Tesla's autopilot or full self-driving, quote unquote full self-driving, you have to be paying attention. Because right now, none of these systems are designed to work without the driver being able to take over in an emergency situation. Hopefully I don't have one of those as I'm sitting here talking to you, but it is always a possibility. If this Subaru over here cuts across in front of me, I may have to take control. The computer may not be quick enough to respond. Um, thankfully it didn't, um, and we're able to continue on our way. Um, one thing that I will try to do just for the sake of experimentation is I will block the camera sensor with my hand to see if it can determine, and now it's telling me to watch the road. So I remove my hand, it relocks re onto my eyes and my face. And I am wearing sunglasses right now. I'm wearing polarized sunglasses for, for what it's worth. It seems to be working pretty well. Um, it's, it's almost uncanny in how easily it works. Like it's not really directing me to do, to do anything. Um, early adaptations of this do not include um, automatic lane key or automatic lane changing. I mean, um, GM Super Cruise will at this point do lane changing, as will for or as will Tesla's um, enhanced autopilot. So the navigate on autopilot function will also will also do the lane changing for you. So it's not quite as advanced yet as some of the competitors, but really it's only a software update or two away. I think from from offering that. So. Uh, that's pretty cool and it's pretty cool that you can get it in in this case a high performance car yes it is a electric car um, and it's designed to be sort of your everyday kind of driver it's not a 
Mustang in that traditional sense of being a proper sports car. But this is the GT version. This is all of the horsepower and all of the torques. Um, and as you can see there, I just left the blue zone, which I knew that I was going to based on based on the maps that Ford provided. Um, and then basically just to put your hands back on the steering wheel. It's still doing the level two ADAS. It's still keeping me in the center and everything like that. Just this particular part of the 101 isn't digitally mapped the way that it needs to be in order for Blue Cruise to function without my hands on the steering wheel. It didn't make any noise when that transition came. It just popped up and said, hey, now's the time to take over. Of course, if I wouldn't have immediately put my hand on the steering wheel, it would have started beeping as it would normally do if your hands weren't on the steering wheel. So that's a very, 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 very early look at Ford's Blue Cruise technology, which is gonna be rolling out across the entire lineup. Um, this Mach-E already has it on it. They're pushing the software updates now to Mach-E's that did come equipped with the tech. Um, Ford's F-150 has it, and it should be rolling out pretty steady pretty soon. So we look forward to being able to take Blue Cruise at home and actually give it a proper road trip to see how well it works. But early impressions of the tech is pretty solid, and it is one cool reason why maybe you want to consider the Mach-E over some of the other competitors out there, such as the Polestar 2 or Volkswagen's ID4.